کلاله طبیب زاده They said heroin would be the best high I ever had. Sweetheart? Sweetie, listen to me. سلام به بینندگان و شنوندگان عزیز من کلاله طبیب زاده هستم به برنامه تلنگار یا ویک اپ کال خوش اومدید برای اون سری از دوستان که با ما قبلا بودن خیلی ممنون که با ما هستید و برای اون گروه دوستان که دفعه اول هست به این برنامه گوش میکنن یا نگاه میکنن خوش آمد میگم امیدوارم که از این برنامه خوشتون بیاد و مطالبش رو مفید براتون واقع بشه چون هدف و نیت اصلی من از اجرای این برنامه این هست که بتونم اطلاعات و ابزاری رو در اختیارتون قرار بدم که بتونید در زندگی ازش استفاده بکنید و یه جوری براتون مفید باشه حالا چه برای خودتون چه برای دوستی آشنایی کسی که میشناسین برای اون سری از دوستان که دفعه اول هست با ما هستن یک توضیح مختصر راجع به برنامه ای که من اینجا باش راجع به صحبت می کنم توضیح بدم من حدود 8 سال هست که داوطلبانه در یک سازمان غیر انتفاعی به نام بنیاد دنیای آری از مواد مخدر یا فاندیشن فور دراگ فری ورلد داوطلبانه کار می کنم و دلیل این کار و دلیلی که شروع کردم باشون کار کردن اینه که دیدم چقدر بچه های جوان چقدر نوجوان و چقدر تینیجر ها دارن به خاطر اینکه نمیدونن مواد مخدر واقعا چه اثری تو زندگیشون میذاره دارن واقعا از بین میرن حالا یا میمیرن یا اینکه اصلا زندگیشون به یه راهی میره که دیگه نمیتونن برگردن و نه تنها زندگی خودشون رو داره اثر میذاره بلکه زندگی خانواده رو از هم دیگه میپاشه از هم دیگه جدا میشن و مواد مخدر متاسفانه یه سابجکتی هستش که فقط روی زندگی اون کسی که داره معتاده اثر نمیذاره همه رو میتونه واقعا زندگی همه رو خراب کنه دور و رو و خوشبختانه من خودم هیچ وقت مواد مصرف نکردم نه شوهرم بلکه شاخ دور و بر موادم نبودم ولی 8 سال پیش وقتی شنیدم راجع پسر 15 ساله که برای اولین بار توی مهمونی بود و که قرص های دارای تجویزی به هم دیگه پخش میکردن آورده بودن و این پسر که هیچ وقت در عمرش نه مشروب خورده بود نه سیگار کشیده بود چند از این قرص ها رو میخوره و میمیره به خاطر اثری که رو بدنش گذاشت مثل بود که از خواب بیدار شدم و چون من خودم هم موقع پسر کوچیکم 15 سالش بود و دیدم این پسر که این کار کرد لابد هیچی نمیدونست راجب ریسکی که داشت برمی داشت که این یه داروی تجویزی رو که اصلا معلوم نیست برای کی دادن اینا همجوره برمیره دو ستاش رو میخوره و اون موقع بود که میگم از خواب بیدار شدم و دیدم انگار که توی حباب شیشه زندگی میکردم و متوجه شدم که این که فقط بچه های خودم تو مواد نباشن مواد مصرف نکنن کافی نیستش این همه بچه دوستاشون چی کازناشون چی این همه بچه که تو خیابونا دارن رانندگی میکنن دارن کار میکنن اونا همه میتونن رو زندگی ما اثر بذارن ما چقدر میشنویم راجع به آدمایی که مس میکنن تصادف ماشین دارن و خیلی اوقات خودشون زنده میمونن ولی یه طرف بیگناه رو میکشن و یه باور دیگه من اینه که ما وقتی از یه موضوع آگاه میشیم باید مسئولیت راجع بهش بگیریم نمیتونیم بگیم که به من ربطی نداره نمیتونیم پشتش رو بهش بکنیم نمیتونیم انکار بکنیم و برای همین بود که من این برنامه شروع کردم با این برنامه کار کردن و این برنامه رو خیلی دوست دارم به خاطر اینکه مبنا و اساسش بر این هستش که نو جوونا و جوونا رو مجهز بکنه به داده درست به حقیقت نه اینکه موعظشون بکنه چون که هیچ کسی دوست نداره که بهش بگه این کار بکن اون کار نکن مخصوصا بچه‌ها تینیجرا که همه میدونیم که اگه بهشون بگه این کارو بکن نمیکنن اگه بگیم این کارو نکن میرن میکنن و 
این برنامه حقیقت در مورد دارو و مواد مخدر یا The Truth About Drugs گسترده ترین برنامه غیر دولتی آموزشی و پیشگیری از مصرف مواد مخدر در جهان هست مطالبشون به 22 زبون مختلف ترجمه شده شبه اصلی شلس آنجلسه ولی بیشتر از 100 تا شبه در سراسر سر جهان داره و به زبان فارسی هم ترجمه شده ولی هنوز قابل دسترس نیست و تمام مطالبشون هم رایگان هست هسته اصلی مطالبشون این دیویدی هست که یک فیلم مستنده به نام Real People, Real Stories یا آدم های واقعی، داستان های واقعی که داستان که افرادی هستن که در جوانی تینیجری متاد شدن و اونقدر خوششانس بودن که زنده موندن و در داستان زندگیشون رو تعریف میکنن و چارده تا کتاب چه داره که هر کدومش راجب مثلا حقیقت در مورد ماری جوانا، حقیقت در مورد الکل، حقیقت در مورد هروین و غیره که چارده، سیزده تا داروی سیزت و مواد مخدر مختلف و راجبش صحبت میکنه حقیقت رو در موردش میگه اسمای خیابونیش از کجا ریشه میگیره از کجا میاد اثرات کوتاه مدت بلند مدت و همه اونا رو <coughs> کاملا توضیح میده و همونطور که گفتم تمام این مطالب رایگان در اختیارتون میتونه قرار بگیره اگه به وبسایتشون برین که هست www.drugfreeworld.org تمام این مطالب رو میتونین اونجا روی سایتشون ببینین که البته الان به انگلیسی هست ولی امیدوارم به زودی تمام مطالب فارسیش هم روی سایت بتونه قرار بگیره و من هر هفته سعی می کنم علاوه بر اطلاعاتی که در دسترستون قرار میدم مهمون هایم دعوت بکنم که تو این مواد مخدر تجربه دارن حالا یا خودشون متاد بودن و الان پاک شدن یا کسای دیگری که مثلا با تو سازمان های بازپروری کار میکنن با آدم های متاد کار کردن یا میکنن که بتونن یه با حرفاشون با تجربه هاشون بتونن به شما کمک بکنن یا کمک بکنن دوباره به کسی که ممکنه شما بشناسین به خاطر اینکه همونطوری که توی این مستند میگه یک از بچه ها میگه ما هر چیزی رو مجبور نیستیم که لزوما خودمون تجربه بکنیم تا ببینیم چه جوریه یه تصادف ماشین رو میتونیم یاد بگیریم که چه بلایی میتونه سر که بیاد با کسایی که تجربه داشتن و تصادف کردن و دوباره میگم من این چیزی که تو این برنامه خیلی تاکید روش دارم اینه که حقیقت رو در مورد هر چیزی بعد خودمون بریم پیدا بکنیم مخصوصا مواد مخدر مخصوصا این دور زمانه که با سوشال میدیا انقدر پیام های مختلف تمام مدت بچه هامون دارن میگیرن خودمون داریم میگیریم خیلی پدر و مادر رو نمیدونن که واقعا حقیقت مثلا در مورد ماری جوانا چیه فکر میکنن چون خیلی ایالت ها تو آمریکا مصرف تفریحیش و قانونی کردن پس پات اوکی هستش ماری جوانا اوکی طبیعی عادی در صورت که حقیقت کاملا با این متفاوته و برای همین من میگم برنامه رو خیلی دوست دارم چون حقیقت رو میگه میگه که برین دنبال حقیقت و از کس اون حقیقت رو بشنوین گوش بکنید که منفعت شخصی نداره از حرفی که داره به شما میزنه و میگم من همینجور خیلی تاکید دارم که این دور زمان مواد مخدر چقدر داره زندگی رو از بین میبره میخواد تغییر باشیم ثروتمند باشیم هر, هر, هر نژادی داره رو همه اثر میذاره و خیلی مهم میدونم که بتونیم این برنامه رو خودمون راجبش پیدا کنیم خودمون حقیقت رو در بیابیم و به دیگران هم منتقل بکنیم و بهشون برمر رو نشون بدیم من با خیلی بچه ها صحبت کردم توی این هشت سال مدارس رفتم و خیلی بچه ها بودن 14-15 ساله که پیش من اومدم بعد از اینکه یکی دوتا از این فصل دیوید رو دیدن و گفتن اگه این چیزا رو میدونستن هیچ وقت کاری که کردن رو نمی کردن. و حالا قبل از اینکه مهمون های امروز هم معرفی بکنم بریم با هم فصل حقیقت در مورد هروئین توی این دیویدی رو با هم ببینیم. Ah, uh, okay.
It was around when I was 13 or 14, and you kind of find yourself trying to pick and choose your friends. And also at the same time, you know, you're not really worried about what you want to accomplish at that time, but what people you want to hang out with. I wanted to fit in. Wasn't a popular kid in school, and it made me forget about all that. You know, like, oh yeah, everybody else is doing it, so I'm gonna do it. Friends were doing it. They just wanted to jump right in and have fun. I did drugs because it seemed like it was fun. But it was the cool thing to do. The cool thing to do was to get high, go to parties. Growing up, you know, you're struggling. Couldn't deal with life, so I didn't have to deal with life. I wouldn't listen to anyone. I was stubborn. Like, as a rebellious thing, this is what the rebel kids were doing. I just wanted to see what it was like. I started experimenting with it. Experimenting with friends. First tried it because I was bored. I was always up to try something new. You know, when I was growing up, we had this program that was just say no, just say no. People are just saying no, but they're not saying why. It's like telling a person no, and then they go do it. Sparked my interest on drugs. I knew that they were bad, and I always heard about this addiction, but I didn't know what it meant. That's probably the number one reason why I did drugs in the first place. I just didn't know. Drugs are everywhere. They're in magazines, movies, um, TV shows, you know, billboards. They're all over the place. You know, in the movies they make it look they make it look cool, but in real life it's not cool. It's uh it's a serious problem. And a lot of times, they try to glamorize drugs. Like, make drug dealers or getting high look cool. But that's only in the movies. In real life, it's a whole different story. All drugs, whether we're talking about alcohol, marijuana, LSD, these are all essentially poisons. It would depend on the amount that you take. I mean, a lesser amount might just speed you up, make you feel really active. A stronger amount or a stronger dosage would act as a sedative, make you slow, sluggish, tired. And even more amounts, it would kill you. You'd have an overdose. Every drug works in these stages. It's only really the amount needed to make the effect that's the difference from drug to drug. A person who's taking drugs, whether for physical pain or just to try and block off any sensations they don't want to feel, those sensations are actually just being pushed away and getting worse and worse. You're going to be totally numb and just not be able to feel anything. When you take drugs, the drug goes through your bloodstream and later on in your life, that drug can, you know, come back up and into a flashback when you use the drug. You could have taken LSD one day and like a year down the road, it could come back into effect and you can start hallucinating again. And it's not just LSD, it's every drug. So you can get hit with the effects of a drug even a long time after you stop taking them. Drugs definitely affect the mind. Uh, everything you see around you is different than what's really going on. You can't hear correctly, see correctly. All of your senses are totally thrown off. Your perception is definitely distorted makes it dangerous for you and others because you don't know what's going on. You can't handle things, you know, the way they're supposed to be handled. Drugs affect your memory so much. It doesn't matter if you're taking them for a long time or just a short period of time. I know, like, when I first got, like, tried studying and stuff more, like, I really couldn't concentrate, couldn't pay attention. I went from, like, a straight-A student to, like, you know, a B minus student, C student. Then I quit going to school and I would get really frustrated. It's like your brain won't function. You can't think straight. It's like everything is messed up. I never got anything done. I would start on something and I wouldn't finish it. it just didn't happen. It was just unbearable. I, I couldn't deal with life at all. I couldn't get a job because I was like just out of it completely. My decisions were based off of, you know, what this drug is telling me to do rather than, you know, what I want to do. I got them from friends in school. Two friends. A friend of mine. And my older brother's friends. Bunch of girlfriends. Boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Older guy. My dad. My cousin. My brother. My older sister. Older kids. My buddy just said, you know, you can do it every once in a while, it'll be no problem. Told us it was going to be the best thing we've ever done. You can do it once, you'll be fine. It's not going to hurt you, really. It's just a little pick-me-up. You can't get addicted to it. They said it's not something that you're going to be taking every day. It's just something that you can take when you want to have fun. Oh, this is going to be a fun time. It's a fun drug to be on. It makes you easier to talk to girls and they said they'll bring you up it's gonna make you feel different it's gonna you're gonna like it you're gonna feel good it's all in your face that that's that's the thing to do all it is is taking a drug dealer's word for it when you're trying to get someone hooked you'll say whatever you can to get a customer you're lying for them to believe you so you can make money 
I would tell people it's fun, makes you energetic, makes you more likable, it's something you know people want to be around. I'd tell them whatever they wanted to hear in order to pick that first one up. You know, when I was 12 years old, I didn't say, hey, I want to be 24 in rehab. I never said that to myself, you know, but that's what became true, you know, and I never thought about it when I was, when I was 13 years old, I started smoking pot. I was that kid that started out with marijuana and played around with certain party drugs, whatnot, and I told myself specifically that I would never do certain things, cocaine, heroin, and it only took a short time for me to finally accept it and be like, okay, I'll try that. I had no idea where it would lead me to almost dying, to stealing, lying, cheating, ruining relationships, it didn't matter. I didn't get into sports, I didn't get into the clubs, I didn't even go to prom. It left me with uh, living on the streets without a family, you know, and it's, is that what I set out to be? No, you know what I mean? I was just set out to have a good time at college parties. The drugs robbed me of all the pleasure of life. The drugs took away my family, the drugs took away my girlfriend, my Friends. I looked back on a five, six years of my life and saw that all I had done is absolutely just ruined incredible opportunities that I had to have success and hurt all the people around me. It's not just something that's going to affect tomorrow, it's going to affect forever. You don't have to find out every, you know, everything for yourself. You don't have to find out what a car accident experience is like. Do yourself a favor. Don't fall into the same footsteps as so many other people have. And realize that you could be the guy living under the bridge shooting heroin. You might think you won't get like that. None of us ever did, and we wound up in those same shoes. What I would tell people is just, I would give them my story. I would tell them my exact story. I would tell them my story. A story like mine. Insanity in my story. Ultimately, it comes down to their own decision making. You have to get the facts. Check the statistics. Find out for yourself. Find out for yourself. Find out the actual truth of, of what these are and what they're going to do to your life. I would just say to anybody, you know, if you're gonna do something, you know, if you're really gonna do something, go educate yourself on it beforehand. I think there's a lot of truth in that. سلام دوباره من کلال طبیبزاده هستم برنامه تلنگور یا ویکاب کال الان فصل اول این دیویدی رو با هم دیدیم من فکر کنم می‌خواستیم هروئین رو بزنیم براتون ولی زیر نویس فارسیش رو نداشتیم برای همین همین اینتروداکشن رو براتون گذاشتیم مال حقیقت در مورد دارو و مواد مخدر که حرف آخرش واقعا به دل من خیلی میشینه که میگه که هر کاری می‌خوایم بریم بکنین برین حقیقت رو در موردش خودتون پیدا بکنین قبل از که تصمیم بگیرین چیکار می‌خواید بکنین و چقدر درست در مورد مواد مخدر و حالا مهمونای امروز هم معرفی بکنم من خودم خیلی اکسایدت هستم هیجان زده هستم به قول معروف که اینجا هستن برای همین انگلیس آمریکایی هستم برای من هی دوباره آمریکا انگلیسی حرف میزنم و سعی میکنم تا اونجا که میتونم براتون به فارسی ترجمهش بکنم سو مای گست تودی ار فابیان پادرو اند کنن بانر thank you so much for being here thank you for having thank us thank you for having us you don't understand any of the farsi i said <laughs> very little very little <laughs> okay so i um, i mean I, you, you you know about the program and uh, the first chapter that we saw but i told everyone that i'm so excited to have you guys here because i really want to hear your stories and um, i'm going to try to translate as best as i can uh, so i'm going to start with fabian fabian can you tell us uh, what you do and how long you've been doing it Yeah, so my name is Fabian Padro. I'm the executive director for Narcanon Ojai, okay. which is the uh, premier center for Narc all Narcanons nationwide. Okay. And uh, basically, I run a facility that's on 45 acres. It's a 27,000 square foot facility, and it specializes for drug, drug and alcohol rehab okay. for high caliber executives and uh, celebrities and children of celebrities and, and that type of caliber of people. Well, how long have you been running it? I've been running it for two and a half years now. Okay. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. I've been in the field for 13 years. Oh my God, that's great. So yeah. I'm going to translate that real quickly. Sure. Uh, Fabian Modir Ejrayi Sazman Narkanan Tui Ohai has, ke yek markaz baz parvari 27,000 square feet has, 45 acre va بیشتر متخصص هست اختصاص میدم به آدم های معروف یا, مدیر، یا آدم هایی که شاید مثلا نمیخوان جای معمولی برن برای اینکه ترک اعتیاد بکنن و دو سالی نیم هستش که اونجا رو داره مدیریت میکنه 
so in this two and a half years or in the 13 years that you've done what you do, you've, you've uh, like, what have you noticed? What is the, I mean, you've probably seen a lot, people coming in addicted and leaving clean. Right. So I've, we've helped, uh, so Narcodon's been around for 50 years. So there's been hundreds if not thousands of people that have gone through the program. Uh, myself, uh, you know, I've seen quite a bit over the last two years. Right now, you know, the United States is facing a, a, a opiate drug epidemic. Right. Over uh, 50,000 50, people die uh, last year alone from preventable uh, drug overdoses. Right. That's more than the Vietnam War. So when people come into our program, obviously we're seeing th that struggle of people going through different types of addiction. But by the time that they leave our program, you know, they've transformed themselves. They're coming back to life and able to get their life back and go and live a happy and drug-free life. Right. I know. I, when I met Canon, I cannot believe. I mean, you look, you look like a poster child. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, you, I mean, if I saw you on the street, I would have never thought, I would never think that this kid, you know, did drugs. And you've been clean for 10 months, you said. Yeah, it's been 10 months, about nine days ago. Nine days ago. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm just going to translate real quickly what he just mentioned. چیزی که فیبی هم ازش پرسیدم که تو این دو سال نیم که مدیر اجرایی این نارکنان اینجا بود یا سیزه سالی که تو این اریا کار میکنه چی توجه کرده و گفتش که تو این دو سال نیم گذشته خیلی آدمایی که میان معتادن به به خاطر اپیدمی افیونی که در آمریکا هست به داروی تجویزی مردم معتاد میشن خیلی اونا رو داره میبینه که میان و اینکه یه اتفاقی که میفته اینه که خیلی ها که با داروی تجویزی معتاد میشن بعد به سوی مواد هروئین و این چیزا میتونن برن و اینکه چه جوری وارد میشن معتادن و وقتی از اونجا پاک میشن میرن مثل اینکه زندگیشون رو دوباره به دست آوردن و راجع به همین اپیدمی افرینی حرفی که زد که چقدر الان تو آمریکا قوقا کرده پارسال حدود هفتاد هزار نفر مردن که بیشتر از آدم های هستش که توی جنگ ویدام از بین رفتن و مهمون دیگرمون امروز کنن هست کنن بانر که الان ده ماه و نه روزه که نه ده, ماه ده ماهی که پاک هست و من حرفی که زمان گفتم که انقدر الان قیافش تمیز و پاکس کردم اگه تو خوابو میدونم چه جوری فکر نمیکردم که همچین کسی یه زمانی تا ده ماه پیش معتاد بود سو دو یو وانت تل اس اباوت یور استوری اند وات یو بین ترو یور اند هاو اولد یو ار یا اف کورس سو مای نیم از کانن 26 ایرز اولد ام آی استارتد یوزینگ درگز وان آی واز اباوت 12 ایرز اولد اند ایت استارتد اوت وذ ماریوانا ام And really, it was, I, I think I just wanted to fit in. Okay. Um, and that quickly escalated to cocaine and ecstasy. Um, still pretty young. And it, it got to a point where um, my parents sent me to a rehab. And uh, I was there for about... 18 months and uh, after 18 months I relapsed as soon as I came home. So how old were you when you did your first rehab? <clears throat> 15 and a half. Because yeah, I'm going to translate that real quick. So at that was 26 years از دوازده سالگی شروع کرد و اولین ماده که استفاده کرد ماریجوانا بود و گفت به زودی از ماریجوانا رفتم به کوکائین و اکسسی 15 سالگی اولین مرکز باز پروری پدر مادرش گذاشتنش ولی تا اومد بیرون دوباره شروع به ماده که استفاده مواد کرد. So When you were 12 years old, what made you decide to, to try it? Um, you know, honestly, I think there was a few things. You know, I uh, grew up as a pretty insecure, picked on kid. I was picked on a lot. But also, um, I have a lot of older siblings. And around 11, 10, 11 years old, um, I learned that my older brother had been using drugs for, for quite some time. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, I'm never going to touch that stuff. Uh, that's not me. And um, I saw how much attention he was getting. And I figured, well, if, if that's, you know, what works nowadays in this world, then let's try it out. What, what kind of attention was he getting? Um, just you know from the family from you know he uh 
he had been through a lot just like I had uh, eventually ended up going through but it was mainly from the family oh you, was it attention because he was addicted and yeah oh that kind of yeah, attention bad attention oh okay bad attention yeah how old was he uh 21 okay and you were 12 at the time yeah okay Okay, so پرسیدم که در واز اصلی که برای چی چطور شد که شروع کرد؟ اول گفته بود که میخواست فشار بقیه بود و میخواست فیتین بکنه با دوستا شاهینا تو جمعیت و اینکه هفت تا خواهر برادرن و چند تا خواهر برادر بزرگش و برادرش استفاده میکردن ماده و و دید که و این سیکیور بود تو وقتی داشت بزرگ میشد و دید که برادر بزرگش چقدر داشت از پدر مادرش توجه میگرفت چون که معتاد بود و برای خاص که تب اینم توجه بگیره. So then tell me, so then what happened? You uh, started, you, were, you went to rehab at 15? Yeah, so I went to rehab at 15 and you know, I, I thought that I really, you know, that was it. Uh, that, that was all I was going to do. And basically, as soon as I got home, literally within five minutes of being home, um, I drank alcohol for the first time in like three years. I ended up... Um, meeting up with old friends that I had used with previously. Um, and within the next two weeks, you know, I, I just, I wasn't home. I used Xanax, oxycodone, um, cocaine, and I, I just went all out. And, uh, oh my God. Yeah, I ended up in the hospital for a day because I was throwing up blood and um it really started to physically take a toll on me how long were you in rehab when you were 15 18 months so 18 months in rehab and you don't use anything it's completely sober the whole time and then you come home and within five minutes you just drink alcohol yeah that's unbelievable yeah and, and were you living home when you were in rehab or was it one no of so i was in uh i was in rehab in utah and I was, so I was away from home for 18 months. Okay. But yeah, I think one of the things that I hear is that, you know, you can't have people go back to the same environment, you know, with the same people, you know, with the same activities and then not, not expect them to go back to doing drugs. Yeah, it's really hard when, you know, you, you can um, work on yourself as much as you want, but um, nothing changes when when you get pulled out of the environment that you were in right you can do all the work in yourself that you can but everything at home usually stays the same and so you have to do something to change that too right that's very true so i'm going to translate that um so gofish ke 15 saligi 18 mah tuy markaz baz parvari bud waqt umad birun 5 daqiqa baad az inke resid khone avalin bara avalin bar mashrub khord با دوستای قدیمیش که با هم دیگه مواد مصرف میکردن دوباره با هم دیگه برگشتن بیرون رفتن زنکس استفاده کرد مدارای دیگه استفاده کرد خونه نمیرفت برام یه روز کامل گفت تو بیمارستان بودم چون همینجا بالا می آوردم و و من چیزی که پرسیدم گفتم که چطور 18 ماه توی مرکز بازپروری بودی ولی تا برگرد و پاک بودی اون 18 ماه و تا برگشتی خونه شروع کردی گفت آره آدم اگه دوباره برگردیم به تمام محیطی که قبلا توش بودیم با اون دوستایی که باشون مواد مصرف میکردین خیلی طبیعیه که آدم برگرده به اون حالت و عادت هایی که قبلا داشته so then what happened after that so after that um, I was sent to another rehab so how old are you now So I was only home for two weeks. So at this time I was 17. Okay. Um, I was home for two weeks when I relapsed. And then um, I went to another rehab and um, I wasn't there for too long. Um, and basically after I got out of the rehab, um, I went back to using psychedelics. Well, psychedelics for the first time really. Um, and then eventually That's when I really got into pain pills, oxycodone, um, and that's that's when things started getting bad. So um, I started selling drugs to support my habit. Um, I was getting arrested. I'd been arrested for felony commercial burglary, um, petty theft, um, and eventually. Um, the you know the price to get high the price of drugs started getting too high for me because I, i had to use more and more to feel 
the same effect. And um, so after being physically addicted to pain pills, I switched over to heroin. And um, once I started doing heroin, my life took a turn for the worse. And I was still supporting my habit by selling drugs. Um, I had to use daily, otherwise I'd be going through withdrawal. And eventually, the heroin addiction led me to getting arrested for possession with intent to sell of heroin, possession with intent to sell for meth, trafficking heroin, and trafficking meth. Oh my God. I mean, I, unbelievable how you've been able to pull out of that. So the first rehab was 15, and the second one was in, uh, when you were 17. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to try to remember what you just said. Um, so he was so lucky to be rehab. He didn't miss it, but as two weeks, he got better. On that day, he was in the hospital for treatment, such as oxycodone, morphine, and و اون موقع خیلی ادیکشنش اعتیادش قوی میشه خیلی بد میشه و شروع میکنه برای اینکه بتونه پول اونا رو در بیاره شروع میکنه به مواد فروختن و هر روز بعد استفاده میکردی مواد رو تا اصلا بتونه فانکشن بکنه بتونه زندگیشو بکنه و به زودی از استفاده داروی تجویزی رفت به هروئین به خاطر اینکه منم اینو شنیدم که و خوندم که از پرسکریپشن مدیکیشن داروی تجویزی دراگ بعدی چون که اگه نتونین به دست بیارین دراگی که خیلی بیشتر شبیه حالتایی که بهتون میده مثلا اون هست هروئین هستش و با وقتی هروئین استفاده کردم زندگیم دیگه حتی بدترم شد و داشت میفوق و چند بار دستگیرم شد سو هاو مینی تایمز ور یو ارستد اند وات هاپن وین یو ور ارستد ام سو آی بن ارستد ا توتال 14 تایمز ام Usually, every time it ended up in about at least a month in jail. Um, I've put, been put on probation twice in two different states. Um, and there was a few times where, you know, I was facing doing 42 years in jail or in prison. 42 years? 42 years. So... Oh, my God. Yeah, eventually... Um, It got to the point where I was selling a lot of drugs, and um, I got pulled over. I had fallen asleep at the wheel from heroin, and um, I had a bunch of drugs in my car, and so I got charged with uh, seven felonies and six misdemeanors. And um, luckily, um, basically what happened is I ended up getting put on probation for that, and then I caught another drug charge for possession of cocaine. And um, that's basically when the court system decided they had enough of me, and they said that I could either go to rehab or serve my time in prison. And, and how old were you then? So at the time, I was 25, so a year ago. A year ago? Yeah. Oh, my God. So... Um, I, I knew that I, I wanted to be sober, I just didn't have the tools to do so. And for some reason I continued to have cravings after cravings after cravings. <clears throat> and so that's when my family and I contacted Narcanon. And um, yeah, the, the court system was okay with that. That's awesome. Wow, okay, so I'm going to translate that. Um, چهارده دفعه دستگیر شده و آخرین دفعه و یک از was it the last time that you had the, it would have been 42 years it could be 42 years yeah. in jail okay. آخرین دفعه که دستگیر شد که پارسال بود گفت بهم گفتن یا چرا دو سال زندان میری به خاطر اینکه رانندگی میکرد خوابش برد و تو ماشینش هروئین و کوکئین داشت و اینجا بهش دادگاه گفتن که یا میتونی مرکز بازپروری بری یا اینکه چرا دو سال زندان داری که پارسا بود که با پدر و مادرش و فامیلش با نارکنان تماس گرفتن و نارکنان رفت و الان پاک شده دست دست از امیزینگ سو ایت ایت فانی دت یو سید یو وانت تو بی کلین بات یو جاست دیدن نو هاو اند آی آی فیل لایک ا لات اف پیپل هو دو گت ادیکتد دی دو وانت گت کلین دی جاست دون نو دی جاست دون نو هاو تو دو ایت ایت لایک دی کریوینگ 
that they have every day, they just don't know how to go around it. Yeah, it's a it's a really um, scary feeling. Like I knew I wanted to be sober for at least a year before I actually decided to get some help. And um, just knowing that, you know, I'm going to be without what's been helping me or what I thought has been helping me. Um, it's a scary feeling, but taking that jump, I felt much more relief than even the relief that I would get from drugs. Once, once I knew that I was doing something about it, I was, it, it, it helped. It, I knew that I was taking action and I knew that something was going to change. Right, that's actually very important. I'm going to translate that before I forget it. چیزی که گفت اینه که وقتی که اون ولای مصرف رو داری خیلی سخته که آدم بتونه اون رو کنار بذاره یا بگه که دیگه دیگه این مادر رو استفاده نمی کنم. ولی وقتی که تصمیم می گیری پاک بشی وقتی که تصمیم می گیری مواد رو کنار بذاری اون احساس ریلیفی که آدم می گیره احساسی که احساس خوبی که می گیری که داری یه کاری می کنی از هر ریلیفی از هر احساسی که استفاده ماده بهت به مواد مخدر بهت بده خیلی خیلی بهتره um, So what happened to your brother? The, the sister brother that or was it sister or just your brother? My brother um, So my brother is still currently using wow. um, and uh, He has continued down a path of a lot of the legal troubles. Um, <clears throat> and that's, you know, I think that's another important thing that I'd like to at least touch on is that when, when I was using drugs, despite being arrested four time, 14 times, um, I thought I was immune from getting in trouble. I, I just didn't think that it would ever happen to me. Right. Um, But the truth is, is that it does. Even after 14 times being arrested. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, you know, <clears throat> you, your, your decisions catch up with you. Right. And um, if you don't do something about it soon, then th there comes a point where you may not be able to come back. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, سو so, چیزی که گفت این که وقتی که معتاد هستی احساس میکنه که هیچ اتفاق بدی برات نمیفته گفت این فکر رو میکردم حتی وقتی 14 بار دستگیر شده بودم و برادر گفتم برادر بزرگت که معتاد بود چه جوری گفتن هنوز معتاده و زندگیش داره بدتر و بدتر میشه و اینکه یه دیگه که زد این که وقتی معتاد هستین همون فکر میکنه که هیچ بلایی سرتون نمیاد هیچ مشکلی براتون پیش نمیاد ولی هی اوضاعتون بدتر و بدتر میشه و ممکنه به این نقطه برسین که دیگه راه برگشت هم نداشته باشین سو فیبین ایز ایر اینتینگ ایلز یو لایک تو اد اباوت وات هیز گان ترو ات دی سنر اور وات یو نوتیس وید پیپل لایک هیم دات کام یا آی مین لایک آی سید اور سنر یو نو از تیلر تو پیپل of means because it's a specialized center but we have other centers that is for all walks of life and we welcome all walks of life and one of the uh, I guess the misnomers of the days of you know a drug addict is somebody who's under the bridge and who's homeless that's just not the case right. you know it's people that are coming from good families that are well off uh, as well you know this it knows no bounds as far as drug addiction knows no bounds it can be you know female male successful not successful teacher right. all walks of life um, and one of the things that's unique with our program that's different than any other program and one of the things that Cannon was saying is that he didn't know how to get clean and he continued to have cravings is when a person does use drugs even though when they stop one of the things is that the the drugs stay lodged in the fatty tissues of the body and so we have a unique part of our program that's unique and nobody else does it is is a part where they go into the sauna and they take vitamins and they sweat right. and it's all natural but it gets the drugs out of the fatty tissues Uh, we also have a non-medical withdrawal that they do first to help them, you know, get through the first part, which is one of the hardest parts, which is coming off the drugs, is that withdrawal from the drugs. And that's one of the things that people fear the most is that that withdrawal effect that, they, you know, throwing up, vomiting, you know, raised temperatures, heart rate, things like that, anxiety. So that's what those drugs are designed to do is to get the person even afraid to even quit doing them because they know how bad it is when they're trying to withdraw from the drugs. Right, right. That's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to translate it all. Um, 
چیزی که فیبیان گفت که مدیر اجرایی مرکز بازپروری نارکنان هست گفتش که همونطور که کنن گفت خیلی اوقات مردم میخوان پاک بشن ولی نمیدونن چیکار کنن اون ولای مصرفی که دارن چه فیزیکی چه ایموشنالی باعث میشه که ندونن که چه جوری میتونن از این مواد یه دفعه قطع بکنن و اینکه برنامهشون یه چیز به خصوص داره چون مواد مخدر توی وقت استفاده میشه توی چربی بدن توی فتی تیشو بدن جمع میشه و تو وقتی مصرف نکنید حتی اگه 6 ماه مصرف نکنید اینا هنوز اونجا هستن و میتونن ریلیس بشن توی رگاتون توی بدنتون و هنوز اون احساس نشگی رو بهتون بده و اینا توی پروگرامشون دارن که این با سونا با عرق کردن تمام اینا رو از بدنتون بیرون میارن و تمام زندگی رو آدمو و به تمام جنبه های زندگی نگاه میکنن چون همونطور که گفتیم اگه خودتون هیچ فرق نکنید به همون محیطی که قبلا بودین برگردین میتونه همه چی دوباره برگرده به همون ج... به نوعی که قبلا بود um, so uh, can it, anything else you want to say about your life on drugs and uh, what like okay one other question i have is before we before we do that like what did your parents do this time because i'm a parent and i actually have a boy my oldest one is 26 is your age i'm thinking my god the parents must must have been dying when to see to see your kid go through this yeah i mean i i know it definitely um it was hard for them at first and um especially when i was younger when i first started using and they they realized it was becoming a problem i i don't think they were quite sure on what to do you know um and i think part of that comes from you know they feel like they should protect their child you know parents feel like they they need to take care of it themselves um but you know sometimes that's not possible especially with drug addiction and sometimes the best thing that you can do for your kid if they they have a problem is to to get them help you know reach out and and find what you can do right um and so because i had been to rehab a couple times and um had failures in the past from that i, I know that they were um not very optimistic i guess is the best way to put <laughs> it but i will say the 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 thing that helped me the most is is once i became ready no matter what they were always there to support me sometimes you have to love your children from afar in situations like this but they they always believed in me if i i said that you know this is what i want to do i want to be sober they didn't you know obviously they had their concerns and possibly some doubts but they were there to support that and that was the best thing that they probably did for me right okay great ام پرسیدم که پدر مادرش چه جوری بودن چون من خودم چون پسر 26 ساله دارم الان همش فکر پدر مادر رو هستم تو این موقع گفتش که پدر مادرم خب آشکار را خیلی ناراحت بودن وقتی دیدن در 12 سالگی 13 سالگی اونقدر اوزان بده ولی و همیشه میخواستن این کاری بکنن که پروتکت هم بکنن محافظت از هم بکنن ولی تو این تو اون اوزا که انقدر خراب بود اونا واقعا کاری نمیتونستن بکنن و وقتی اینجوری هست باید برین از بیرون کمک بگیرین از کسی رو بیارین که میتونه اون کمکی رو که بچه‌تون احتیاج داره بکنین ولی همیشه اونجا بودن که اگه من کمک احتیاج دارم بهم کمک بکنن که پاک بشم و دوباره اینکه وقتی خودش تصمیم گرفت که پاک بشه اون موقع بود که آه، آه، کمکش کردن ولی این دفعه تصمیم خودش بود که باعث شد که نه قدم کمک بکنه که پاک بشه و پاک بمونه Is there any message uh, that you like to give to kids? This, I mean, unfortunately, with pot being legalized, a recreational use, uh, and it's funny because almost everyone I talk to who's you know into harder drugs, they started with pot. So, is there any message that you like to give young kids, 10, 11, 12, who are who see this you know billboards on pot that is natural and it's okay? Uh, what would you like to tell them? Yeah, I mean, I was I was one of those kids that thought, you know, it's natural, it's okay, it's just a plant, but um you know, like I said at the beginning, that's that's what I started with. Mm -hmm. And um it is a gateway drug. Um and and even the times that, you know, I relapsed and began to do other drugs, it started with marijuana and then would turn to cocaine or heroin or um so I mean, I guess the message that I would hope 
kids would get is that, um, you know, it, it's, it's really not worth it. It's not worth taking the chance. You know, I remember being the same age at one point and somebody telling me the same thing mm. and I didn't listen. And, right. and this is what's happened. Right. Wow. That's a powerful message. Uh, I just posted them here. Uh, این دور زمانی که تو آمریکا اینقدر مصرف تفریحی ماریجوانا به خصوص قانونی شده و خیلی این پیام رو دارن بچه همون میگیرن حتی بزرگ که هیچ اشکالی نداره طبیعیه چه پیغامی داره به بچه بده مخصوصا که خودش این زندگی اعتیادی که داشت همش با ماریجوانا شروع شد گفتش که که ماریجوانا واقعا یه داروی دروازه ورود به دنیای مخدرها هست چون با همین خودش هم با ماریجوانا شروع کرد و به زودی به کوکائین و هروئین و زنکس و همه داروهای دیگه رسید و وقتی اون وقتی کوچیک بود 11 12 سالش بود و یکی بهش این حرفا رو میزد گوش نکرد و این حرفی که من انقدر برای همین راجع این برنامه حرف میزنم حقیقت در مورد دارو و مواد مخدر این که حقیقت رو باید بچه ها یا ماها خودمون یاد بگیریم و بهشون بگیم که ریسک که بعد بدونن که ریسکش رو به ریسکش میارزی یا نه که همون کنارم گفتش که هیچ ارزشش رو نداره ارزش اون بلایی که سرتون میاد اون زندگی که براتون مواد میاره هیچ ارزش اون جوینت کشیدن اولو نداره سو وی ار گیتینگ تو دی اند اف دی پروگرام آی وانتد تو تانک یو بوت فور بینگ ویت اس انی لاست وردز ات یو وود لایک تو سی یا جاست اوبویسلی دی تروث ابوت درگز از ا گریت پروگرام اند آی تینک دت وات آی وود سی تو یونگ چیلدرن دت ار لوکینگ ات یو نو اسموکینگ ماریوانا ریکریشنلی از دت اوور 50% اف دی پیپل that actually came to rehabs last year alone in the United States was for marijuana wow. addiction. So learning the truth and learning the facts about drugs and what they actually do and how much more potent the marijuana today is than the marijuana that was in the 70s is, is an interesting factor as well. Also learning that you know, marijuana is actually more carcinogenic than cigarettes. Right. You know, it isn't a healthy drug. Uh, so there's a lot of things that people should just n- learn the truth about drugs, get the facts, get educated on the subject uh, so that they actually can make a decision for themselves on what's best and have, a, you know, the facts in front of them. Right. Um, so obviously if not, then, you know, then coming to a proper rehab would be the, the next step. You know, right. if someone is addicted and they can uh, reach us at Narconon and, and uh, we're here to help and we do it with an all natural method. You know, we don't use drugs to get a drug, a drug addict off of drugs, for right. instance. You know, I know it's a simple concept, but uh, that's, you know, our approach. So if someone's looking for help, they can reach us at narcononohi.org. Right. And, uh, you know, just very happy to be on your show and be able to talk about the subject. Thank you very much. Thank you both very much. به پایان برنامه ما رسیدیم خیلی ممنون که با ما بودید اگه نظری سوالی چیزی دارین با ما در تماس بذارین از طریق info@ain.org چه از من چه از مهمونامون دوباره ممنون که با ما بودین تا هفته دیگه به خدا میسپارمتون They said weed wouldn't lead to harder drugs. They lied. Find out the truth about weed. Drugfreeworld.org. Nearly half of all public school children in the United States have tried drugs or alcohol by the time they're 13 years old. Over half of kids say it would be easy for them to get pot if they wanted some. Seven out of ten teenagers have been offered an illegal drug. Teenagers whose parents talk to them about drugs are 42% less likely to use drugs. Get your kids the truth about drugs. Drugfreeworld.org
مطالعه طبیبزاده